Hi, I'm Paul Wilson, creator of The Body Swing and the director of the Paul Wilson Golf School at Bears Best Las Vegas. In this tip, I'm continuing on with the secret to getting lag in your golf swing. So this is drill number three. So this is a little mini series of tips. So this is the third drill. Now this one is absolutely vital. This is the whole reason you're trying to get lag in your golf swing. All right, so hopefully you enjoy this tip. If so, give me a thumbs up, then click on the button to subscribe to my channel. Click on the little bell and you'll be notified when I post new tips. And please tell all your friends about my tips. You know, there's so many people that are working on lag in their golf swing. I know this tip can help them too. So now we're moving on in with this little secret to getting a lag little mini series here. So we got to do drill number three now. So if you, you know, are just tuning into this, okay, there's other tips in this little series. It's called the secret to getting lag. So you're going to go up here, click up here. You're going to see the very first tip. Okay. You got to understand the whole concept, everything that I'm saying. So you got to start with tip number one. So click right here you'll see tip number one. That'll take you to two, which is the first drill. And then you're going to go to the second drill. This is drill number three. All right. So this is very, very important here. So you got to understand the idea of getting a lag is to generate the club head speed in your downswing. So you're trying to get more lag right here. So let's say I'm coming in with this right here. So my club has got all this time to release. Okay. Now, if you go up to the top like this and you cast the club because you're using your arms, you only have that much time. All right. So you lose time and you lose the amount of release. So that's why we're trying to get lag in our swing. All right. So hear what I just said. We're trying to get the lag, but then we need to release the lag angle. All right. And that is the crucial piece. All right. That's kind of one of the secrets here. You got to get the release. That's the whole point of getting the lag. All right. So, you know, I've seen people work out here at the golf course going like this. I see them working on their lag. Oh, great. And then they go like this and they're trying to pull it through to here. It's like, you don't want to do that. All right. That is locking everything up. Sure. You're getting the lag here, but now you're supposed to be using the lag or releasing that lag angle. If you go like this and try to hold it like that, you know, you're making the club too short for one thing. So you're going to probably hit it thin or top it. And you're not allowing the face to square. The face is going to come through way open. So you want to do a lag and release drill. You got to release it. All right. So here's what we're getting at right here. We're going to go up to the top. We're going to set our maximum hinge angle. Then we're going to maintain that angle. Remembering back to that picture I showed you of Chick Harbert. <laughs> All right. So he look, kind of looked like that. Now from right here, we're going to release the club. All right. So what I'd like you to do is go like this. We're going to hit the top right here. We're going to recognize are our wrists fully hinged. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Now I'm going to keep that angle to here. Kind of like hip height. Then I'm going to release it. Okay. So you could do, uh, top here, release. That's one way you could do it. You could go like this. You could go here, feel it set down to here, back up down to here, doing that like three times and then release it. Okay. That would be a way to do it as well. You could do it even more than that. But anytime you do the lag, you got to now start releasing it. Okay. And that is the concept. That is what you're trying to practice. And you know, people mean well, they try to get you to feel the lag angle, hold the lag, lag angle. But I think a lot of people are mistaking what is going on because I have seen it 
countless times out here. The person's going like this. I see them working on it. And then they go like this and they're all locked. It's like, that's not it. So we need that lag angle so that we generate a faster release. So when I'm talking release, I'm talking about you've got the angle in your wrists. It's going from a hinged position right here, just after you've hit the ball, both arms stretch out, and then it rehinges on this side. At about eye level right here, you want a rehinge angle of 90 degrees in the lead arm. Because if something hinges here, it would rehinge over here. All right, so that's what I'm trying to get you to do in this third secret to getting lag tip. It's the lag and release now. So you can hit balls with this. I wouldn't be trying to hit them too far though. So I'd be kind of going like this, you know, I'm getting ready. I got it on a tee, teed up about a half an inch. And these shots, they're literally only gonna go maybe 30 yards. Okay, so don't worry about the ball. It's only going with 30 yards. Who cares? All right, so I'm just trying to get you to used to the feeling of releasing it. So right here, I got the maximum hinge angle. I go to that position and then I just release it. Okay, I'd maybe even hold it right here so you can see that right here, eye level, you re-hinged the club right there. Why not? Now you know, you're going from a really hinged position to a re-hinged position right there. Remember, it's about loosening up your wrists. The looser wrists create the release or the club head speed. And that's what we're trying to do. So be careful though, not to let go of the club. All right, you wanna hold on. Now, if you're having trouble with that, which a lot of people do, they kind of get a false sense of loose wrists by letting go of the club. So they go like this and they go, oh wow, this is easy. See, they're letting go. No, okay, you can't do that. You gotta hold on. So to do that, you take a tee like this. You put it under your lead pad, okay? Just have it stick out about an inch. Now there is no way you can let go. If you let go, you're gonna drop the tee. So we don't wanna do that. So remember, you're loosening the wrist joint. So you put the T in there. Okay, now with the T in there, you gotta hold on to the T right here. That's loosening up your wrists. And if you haven't seen any of my previous tips, I can hold on and literally white knuckle this golf club and still have loose wrists. That's a secret too. You know, you gotta have a secure connection to the club. It is just the wrists that are loose, which allows the club to release, which generates the club head speed. All right, so hopefully you understand it. This is another one of those little secret things. You know, a lot of people, they obviously don't know it because they're out here doing it wrong and I keep watching them. You know, so it's, yes, lag. Maintaining the lag is important. But what's more important is you gotta use that angle. <laughs> that was the whole reason you, you're trying to build that angle in your swing. So you release it and get more club head speed. I truly hope you've enjoyed this tip. You know, I've been teaching a powerful, effortless, pain-free golf swing now since 1991. If you'd like to learn this type of swing, then head on over to bodyswing.com slash free samples, click the link up here or in the description below, and I'll send you some free samples of my body swing book and video series that take you step by step by step through how to build a powerful, effortless, pain-free golf swing. So once again, head on over to bodyswing.com slash free samples, click the link up here or in the description below, and I'll send you the free samples right away.